As a young kid, I can remember riding around in my dad's Datsun Roadster. My dad owned dozens over the years, and his 1967 was actually the first car I ever drove. When I first started shopping for a sports car, I knew that the Datsun Roadster was the only choice. Eventually, he found one for $2,100, and it looked to be like a pretty simple project with just a few rust spots. We even got it running when I came to visit him in Calgary. The car looked pretty good, and we thought the project was only going to take a few months. Go baby, go baby, go baby. That's it. Woo hoo hoo hoo! <laughs> Love it. She runs. Dish. Runs. The goal is to address the small rust issues so we can drive it through the Canadian Rocky Mountains during autumn, which is something that's been on my bucket list since I started liking cars. It would be perfect if we could get the car finished in time for my birthday in September, but we quickly realized I might have many birthdays before this car was ready. I couldn't properly examine the car in the dark garage that I first saw it in, so maybe if I saw it in the light, I would have noticed this. And this. And oh my god, it was bad. As I peeled back the layers, it only got worse. What I thought would take a couple months turned into a year of fixing rust that would make the Titanic jealous. I learned how to cut, shape, and weld steel in order to fix pieces like the floor, the inner rockers, outer rockers, door pillars, cowl. I really was building two-thirds of this car from scratch. So Alex, what have you gotten yourself into? It's about the dumbest thing a man could do. This is my Christmas present to myself last year. If I had known how rusty it is when I bought it, I wouldn't have bought it. The metal structure is compromised! My garage is in Calgary, but Clayton lives in Toronto, so he couldn't stick around for the entire build. He wasn't totally alone though, we constantly message each other back and forth, and we'd talk about the progress he had made during the day, what the next job was going to be, and how awesome it was going to be to drive this thing when it was finally done. Basically the whole passenger football was destroyed along with the inner fenders and the door post, so that was the next thing I needed to rebuild. There we go. A little bit of grinding, everything will look really, really pretty. And this whole side will be done along with the other side. <sighs> Such a relief. Brand new brake pads. That's pretty cool. One on one side, on the other side. Since the Datsun shares brake design with classic Jaguars, parts are expensive, and I elected to rebuild them instead of replace them. Gaskets. Forgot to put on a gasket! I take everything back off. And with that installed, I'm one step closer to driving this mess. I'm very excited. This panel looks pretty good. It's got a little bit of a rust bubble there. I'm gonna start grinding it back and see how good it really is. Well, everything will probably below here has been fixed. And that's probably also evident by the fact I can do that. Fun! The more I dug in, the worse the news was. This car had been poorly restored once before and the shoddy repairs were covered in body filler. kind of mess have I gotten myself into now? Like the rest of the car, the whole rear rocker section was completely rotten. Now that all those cardboard templates are made, I can turn them into sheet metal. Now that I've got all my pieces made and covered in this 
kind of tar-like paint that I've got. It's time to go ahead and weld everything on. After a year and four grueling months, I could finally see this car returning from the dead. Three months later and I'm still repairing rust. The body mount was ugly, but I didn't realize rust ran the entire length of the seat reinforcements. Alex is obsessed with weight saving, so he actually riveted a piece of aluminum in to wrap up the cowl instead of steel. Probably saved a few grams, and he gets to say it's built like an old Aston Martin. We'll let him have it. Hours turned into days, and then into months, finding more and more rusty areas that needed attention. At certain points, I wondered how he kept finding the motivation to keep going. This was just turning into the car from hell. Both wheel arches were destroyed and needed replacing as well. I visit Calgary fairly frequently, and every time I visited, I checked in with Alex to see what else he had done to the car. Every time he visits, I think he had a little bit of hope that it would be ready to drive, but I just kept finding rust. And if we wanted to drive this thing in two months, I needed to hustle. It's no longer December, and we're still working on it. All that goodness. Mm. Mm. I'm looking for some metal, but it's not in there right now. Maybe some will appear out of sheer fear for its life, but in reality, I'm going to have to go cut it out of an unsuspecting donor cart. Ready for spelunking. In sheet metal. Oh, don't try this at home or something. This is your house. It's not yours. Next Saturday is my birthday. I want to drive it for my birthday really, really bad. I just got myself a set of used tires that are only a couple years old. They're in good shape. Those are going to go on because those tires there are all cracked and terrible and unusable. And I cut out the inner wheel arch, which is right here. You can see how rusty it is. Really not pretty. Whole thing, you know, 50 year old Japanese sheet metal just does not last. The inner wheel arches were so rotten that it was easier to make an extended wheelhouse that connected straight to the quarter panel. This is known as a tub. That is the world's only tub for a Datsun Roadster. Make it stronger, I'll be able to put wider tires because when you have 100 horsepower, you need the widest tires you can get for traction. I used a benzene torch to burn off the undercoating so I would have a nice surface to weld or rivet to. The undercoating found a nice surface to weld itself to when it landed on its face without welding goggles. Crap I you to save money. Idiot. Best part about doing body work on a car, if it doesn't fit, you get to hit it with a hammer. Oh, that's good stuff. These pieces were close to the last ones that I needed to build. Now I could weld everything up. Beauty, only 500 more to go. welded on the inner wheelhouse, then I turned to my donor panels for the outer lip of the wheel arch. Take three. 
Turns out my donor car was also a rusty turd. Oh boy! With the inner and outer wheel arches built, I put on my new tires that admired my, uh, <laughs> handiwork. Yeah, handiwork. It's Tuesday, my birthday's on Saturday, and I want to drive this mess. I got insurance on the thing today, and I need to still get, uh, registration and in transit sticker so I think it's gonna happen tonight I've got a bunch of buddies coming over to watch me wrench on it or maybe they'll help out we'll see but it's getting real close enjoying the night yeah lots of mosquitoes hanging out with cars <laughs> smelling like gasoline mm-hmm whole stick Chris having a good time great time well what do you think of the car she looks great, man. Get in there. Only minimal work can actually occur when you're wrenching with beers and buds. Exemplified here by us taking many hours to install one bumper. All in good fun, nonetheless. Whoa! <laughs> going I still have to book the inspection tomorrow. How you doing? Hi. Okay. Did that go in? Oh yeah. Okay. What about the what about the bolts? <laughs> Ooh, baby, WB40. Oh, okay. Whoa. That is a friggin' sight to behold. So once again, I'm flying into Calgary to visit, and the car looks like it actually might be drivable when I get there. We actually have a shot of driving this thing to the mountains this year. After months of blood, sweat, and caffeine, it was time to take it for its maiden voyage. Before I set off to pick up Clayton from the airport, I had the man himself tune my carbs. My dad. My dad helped me out a lot building this car. I really couldn't have done it without him. Thanks, Dad. Hey, buddy! Good to see you again! Good to see you too! See you, buddy? Yeah. Yeah, no problem. Oh, you bolted the seats in. I did. Wow. I did bolt the seats in. Luxury. Oh, I'm so excited. I've never ridden this thing. I know. I've sat in it. I haven't even, like, been up and down your driveway in it. It's pretty great. I love how it smells. It smells old. Oh, man! We 
It's so cool. You love it? I love every bit of it. God, you must feel like an absolute hero. I feel really good. Oh, Listen to it. Do you hear anything vibrate? What is that? I don't know. That's the ground. That's the ground. Oh. Like it's warm. <laughs> Isn't it good? Uh. Woo so, Cletus, mm. you're in town. It's Tuesday night. Caesar's in town. <laughs> uh, yeah, I caught a flight in this week for the sole reason of being stupid. So, the plan is now, you've got some friends that live in Vernon, B.C. Mm. And how far away is that? Six and a half hours in a normal car. <laughs> for normal people. If a car can drive two hours, they can drive eight hours. I think if you're gonna have any problems, they're gonna show up in the first two hours. And if it's making it through the first two hours and it's up to temperature and it's going fine, you'll just go. I'm taking your word for it because I only finished this thing last Tuesday. <laughs> and we're still working on it. As you can see, we're sitting in the seats that are going in the car. We're gonna jack it up on the side and I'm gonna paint a couple more things that are still kind of uh, bear. I don't want the thing to rust. I just finished working on it for two years. Hey, I wanted to rust proof all your meats. <laughs> and after that, it's basically ready to go. We're going to put all our stuff in it. We're going to have our beef jerky and tomorrow at 9 a.m. Hopefully we'll take off. Oh yeah, that's concourse. <laughs> Horn works. I check. It was all coming together. The car was good enough for Clayton to deem it worthy for a 700 mile road trip. How? Boy. That's it. Packed. Let's go. Vernon is almost 350 miles west of Calgary. It was only about 5 degrees when we set off and we had no top, so it was pretty chilly for the first 100 miles or so. Well, we made it this far. Those are Canadian mountains behind us. We're just at the base of Highway 1A. And we got a lot of driving on Highway 1A, which is a really cool road. Let's go drive it. Let's go drive it. How about it? After almost two years of this thing sitting in my garage, I finally took it for the drive I've always dreamed of. Clayton watched this car transform from garbage to drivable garbage, and he couldn't wait to give it a go. You got it. You drive so good, man. It's amazing. Yeah, it's perfect. The drive out west is truly, truly one of the best drives we've ever been on, and in this car, it was life changing. No, dude. After a long day of driving through the mountains, we arrived at our gorgeous destination, Vernon, British Columbia. The little Datsun had done it. But the next day, we were going to go for some real driving.
this is what we came for. West Side Road, a beautiful stretch of pavement from Vernon to Kelowna. side of the road on uh, West Side Road. Came down that hill, took a pretty good corner, and uh, heard a couple pops through the farm. Didn't like it, and then it uh, cut out, so. I'm a little bit uh, scared right now. We're in the middle of nowhere. But it's pretty. Pretty place to break down. Ooh. Seems to be backfiring a lot through the carburetor. It won't even start. Uh, it's probably really, really hot, and we've been driving it pretty hard because we're idiots. But uh, I should say we. I've been driving it, so uh, gonna let it cool for a little bit more. Clayton says that uh, it's probably the timing, maybe, and he's uh, probably correct a little bit. So maybe we'll uh, check. We'll, we'll mark it on the distributor, or maybe it, advance it a little bit and hopefully it'll start back up and uh, we won't be stranded out here in the middle of nowhere, 600 kilometers from home. We're getting spark. Whoa, we're getting spark. Sorry. What's going on, you guys all right? Then a mysterious man known only as Kelly stopped by the side of the road to give us a hand and offered Cletus a beer while we diagnosed the Datsun. He's got like tattoos, he's suntan, he even invited us to his boat to go water skiing for the day. He was all like, hey guys, and he's gonna help us work on this car. What style is it? It's a Datsun. Oh, a thought. Oh, the Datsun, classic. Yeah. Kelly, I might take you up on that beer. Alex was driving, but I happily took the beer. He was so nice, he actually went all the way back to his house to go get us a timing light. Kelly, if you're out there, you are a total bro. Put some muscle into it. Third gear. Here we go. Pushed it down here, we uh, put it in third gear. I tried to bump start it and all it did was blow the white smoke out the back of the tailpipe and uh, basically stayed in gear and turned the engine as it went down and popped through, spitting through the carburetor. I really don't want to be stranded here. I mean, we, we have to drive this back home to Calgary. We have no other option, so it just won't start. It's also having this problem where it seems to just go and stop while we're cranking. I don't know what that is. Boy, I don't like that. <laughs> you took me all the way out here. Come out to the coast. We'll have a couple laughs. We'll have a good time. We'd resigned ourselves to the fate that this thing was not going to run, and I got myself on hold calling a tow truck. Thank you for your continued patience. Please stay on the line, and your call will be taken in priority sequence. Alternatively, you can leave us your callback number, and a BCAA representative will get back to you. But then... Sounds healthy to me. Is it go time? You bet. Get this. Cool. 
lovely oh, at home. Let's go home, buddy. I wait to call uh, AAA until we're out of the woods. Well, get out of the woods then. Here on my side. Sounds good. Better than it was. The timing is quite a bit uh, something. <laughs> Cheers, amigo. We made it. Yeah, that was exciting. Yeah, that was a little bit uh, too much. I never <laughs> doubted it. <laughs> I doubted it from the start, which means I was right. Basically what happened was the rotor inside of the uh, distributor uh, slipped off of its cam like 110 degrees. It's igniting the spark plug at completely the wrong time. It was so messed up. I took it off and I kind of cleaned it up. I put it back on and I realized that it wasn't in the same place as it was when I took it off. It was totally wrong. I'm sitting around uh, calling AMA saying, yeah, we're screwed, come and get us. We're at this road and this road. And Alex, after two hours of messing around with this thing, he's like, I'm gonna fix it. And he just zooms off with a screwdriver. I'm like, what are you doing? And then I'm walking over before I can even talk and it's, it's alive. <laughs> Got home. That is a heron. Wow, he's taking a giant poop. We got a good night's sleep, then hit the road in the morning. Are currently just outside Revelstoke. Alex drove us all the way here from Vernon this morning. Uh, the plan from here, we just gassed up. We're going to drive into the town of Golden, probably swap drivers again, then on to the little town of Field. Good day behind the wheel. Clayton, where are we? The historic village of Field. The worst tragedy right now is that our little Bluetooth speaker ran out of batteries. Oh, the tragedy! What will we ever do? This is the worst trip I've ever been on. Me too! <laughs> now go around me. Hilariously, I did the same thing I did on the mountain. Jam the distributor. Turns out the issue all along was that the poorly secured battery slid into the distributor on sharp right-hand turns. The revived Datsun worked great, and it didn't really have any problems other than the battery sliding into the distributor cap. What it would do is hit the rotor of the distributor right up against the point and it would jam it right in place. And that would put the timing out like 100 degrees or something impossible. That's why it kept backfiring when we were pushing it down the hill. The moral of the story here is trust your old car. Be brave. Nothing is more rewarding than taking a classic car on a trip through the mountains with your best butt. It was a really enjoyable 700 miles with a car that hasn't been on the road since 2004, with no top, no interior, and that I built in one year and eight months from an absolute junkyard dog. Dream achieved. Join us next time on Redis and Cletus.